I wanted to show how I approach integrating hardware instruments with Renoise. While the process is basically the same with any hardware, specifically I'll be using my Nintendo Game Boy running a program called LSDJ. This is something that I never would have thought was possible 10 years ago when I was struggling to keep things in sync. In Renoise Preferences, I've got my Master Clock Out device set to Teensy Boy, which is an interface that lets you connect USB MIDI with a Game Boy Link cable, which blows my mind. I have Send Clock and Start Stop checked, and that's all I need to do in Preferences. To verify it's working, I'll go to the MIDI tab to make sure I can see the device name and the clock signals are being sent, and you can tell because the numbers are rapidly moving. Now I just have to put a line input in the track I want to record with, select a blank sample, and when I start recording, the Game Boy will begin its sequence. For whatever reason, my screen recording software isn't capturing pop-ups. You'll just have to use your imagination that I am, in fact, starting and stopping the recording process here. You may notice I'm clocking this at 45 BPM. That's because the Game Boy I'm using has a half-speed clock, which lets it hit notes an octave lower than normal. Uh, it no longer plays at half-speed when it's synced to a normal-speed clock, so... Since I forgot about that when I was programming the song, I just have to double the tempo of the track after recording. Once everything's recorded, we can delete the noisy line input and verify we now have a sample in the first sample slot. We can give it a listen to to make sure it sounds all right. Just doubling the tempo like I said earlier. Now I can put the sample on my track. It's 128 steps long now that I've doubled the tempo, so I need to add another page. I guess I could have just increased the length of this page. Just throw a high pass on it. A really neat tool down in the routing section is multiband send. There it is. What this does is split your signal between three distinct regions in the EQ spectrum, which you can then route to different places. Getting rid of some tracks for clarity here. So what I'm doing here is creating two additional send tracks. then routing each of my multiband sends to one of them. So this is basically doing the same thing as if you had three different versions of the same sample with really precise band pass filters evenly separating them. This is just way, way easier. It's pretty cool listening to all the different bands separately. You can turn one down, for instance, crank one up if you like it, and throw different effects, etc. the mids band with those four bit sounds it's so like squashed and grindy it's awesome definitely some unpleasant frequencies in this band though so we can do a targeted EQ Ooh. sorry that was awful. That sounds gross. 
us to. Do you love that? Maybe it's just me. Here's the before and after. Oh, it helps if I'm playing the sample. Feel free to judge me on the over the top use of reverb here. But I think no one could deny how cool the multi band send is in completely transforming a sample. Look, watch. That tiny little move just totally changed everything. But it's not influencing anything but that tiny little treble section. After. And you can even add a little bit of the dry signal back. Yeah. And adjust it to taste. So that's the long and short of that. Thanks for watching.